All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Krug Show with a little 49er video on how they can jumpstart their season after the bye week. And, of course, Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Check them out in Emeryville and Corte de Madera. They're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. or until they run out. Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Uh, get the brisket. Go see Damon and Mary. Tell them the Krug sent you. All right, let's talk a little bit. And, of course, this video brought to you by Mojo Fantasy. Check that link in the description. Make sure you use the promo code KRUG, K-R-U-E-G, and get up to $100 matched on your first deposit. Everybody who does it automatically is entered into a drawing to win a Nick Bosa or a Brock Purdy jersey on Thanksgiving night in our postgame show after Niners Hawks from Seattle. All right, let's talk a little bit about the 49ers. Niners in the bye week. And how do they jumpstart their team? How do they get it going? Um, they were they were scoring 30 a game. They were they had won five in a row. Now they're scoring 17 a game over the last three, and they're they're 0 and 3 in the last three. So they're now five and three at the bye week. Uh, and they're looking up at Seattle in the division. They've got Jacksonville waiting for them on the other side of the bye. Jacksonville will also be coming off a bye. So what can the Niners do to jumpstart their season? Now, they did something today, and that was trade um, for uh, for Chase Young, the Washington Commander's defensive end. Uh, and they get a very good deal, a, a, a third-round pick for Chase Young, who's having a great year. He's got five sacks. He looks like he's bounced back from his injury. Now, he hasn't passed his physical yet, and from what I've heard, that may not be just the automatic slam dunk. So we're kind of crossing our fingers that he passes the physical and his, uh, you know, knee injury that he suffered um, doesn't doesn't hold him back. But he was playing good football. He's been healthy. So he, there's no reason to believe that he won't pass the physical. But at the same time, you know, my my commander uh, counterparts on the other side of the country say, you know what, be you know, be, let's see if he passes the physical. So I, you know, the Niners, I don't think are interested or I don't think are necessarily committed to uh, Chase Young long term. They're committed to him this year um, and they got a great deal on him. So I kind of wonder, you know, how stringent they're going to be on this physical to begin with. Um, But we'll see. And it's not yet official until he passes the physical. But what else? Let's just assume he passes the physical and that Chase Young is now opposite Nick Bosa on a line that has Javon Hargrave and Eric Armstead. Does that is that enough for the 49ers to, to you know to jumpstart the Niners and get them back in the in the playoff race and get them back in the Super Bowl conversation? I would say it's not. It's not. I think there's other things they need to do. And let's get into it right here in this video of of what I envision the 49ers needing to do to jumpstart their season and just some suggestions uh, that may help them. All right. I'm a big fan of Jake Brendel at center. Brendel was a Pro Bowl all alternate last year. He was really, really good. But, man, watching DJ Reader throw him at, down in the backfield, um, looking at at, at you know, the struggles the 49ers have had in creating run lanes in the middle of their offensive line, you have John Feliciano there. He's going to play left guard for the next couple of weeks because of the uh, the injury to Aaron Banks. So Banks is out for a couple of weeks with turf toe. And believe me, that's a major injury. I know people go, oh, turf toe. It sounds so, so like nothing. Yeah, it's probably just a sprained toe. No, turf toe can be debilitating and it can be season ending and it can be career altering. So. Uh, Turf toe is a very serious injury, so we'll see if Aaron Banks can come back in a couple weeks. Until he can come back, I think John Feliciano is going to slide in at left guard and Brendel will stay at center. Once Banks gets healthy, I'd be be interested to see if Feliciano could start at center over Brendel. He's a bigger, stronger, more stout player. I think he can stand up against the strong nose guards. The Niners are going to have to play Fletcher Cox later on this year. He's a load. He's incredibly strong. I think Feliciano's a better matchup, to be honest, than Brendel. Brendel's quicker. He's smart. Um, he's 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 competent. 
It's not like he's not competent. He's competent. But Feliciano's a little bit stronger and a little bit more heft, a little bit more weight, a little bit more power. Um, they got to start running the ball a little bit between the tackles. And Feliciano at center might be – that. that's one of the ideas that I have to try to jumpstart the season is, is get Feliciano in there. Uh, number two, play J.P. Mason at running back a little bit. I realize you got Christian McCaffrey. Flex him out. Save some wear and tear on CMC by flexing him out. Use him as a receiver. He's multi-skilled. He can be a running back or a receiver. He's he's very similar to Debo Samuel in that regard. I say get your best players on the field, and J.P. Mason's one of your best players. He's 230 pounds. He runs with conviction. He runs with power. Um, he To me, J.P. Mason looks like a poor man's Marshawn Lynch. Get him on the field. Get him on the field for 15, 20 plays. That touchdown run against Dallas was very impressive. He hasn't seen the ball since. Play J.P. Mason a little bit at running back and use Christian McCaffrey flexed out, and it's a win-win. It gets Mason on the field. It puts your best foot forward talent-wise. It flexes out CMC. He's a tough matchup uh, at receiver for any safety or any linebacker. It will save some wear and tear in his body. You want to make sure you get to December and January football with Christian McCaffrey intact. And if you run him out of the backfield into the A-gaps over and over and over and over and over again, especially when there's no holes there, I think there's a very good chance you're going to wind up in the playoffs without him. So use J.P. Mason. Use Mason a little bit more. He's got more power than Elijah Mitchell. He's got a little bit more speed, I think, than Elijah Mitchell at this point even. Mitchell, I know, ran 4-3-8 coming out of out of uh, college, but man, we're not seeing that right now. And Mason to me looks quick. He looks explosive. Um, I want to see, I want to see JP Mason get some run. Okay. That's, that's, that's one idea. Um, You couldn't trade for an additional corner. So now you need to lean on Samuel Womack and Terrell Luter Jr. Getting back into the mix in the secondary. You know, this is not necessarily bad news. Womack had a phenomenal camp. He really looked great. Um, I would say Samuel Womack made the same kind of strides um, from last year to this year that we saw from Diamador Lenore, except Lenore has been able to stay healthy and Womack wasn't. Get Womack healthy. When he is healthy, he's one of your three best corners. I would start him opposite Mooney Ward and put Demo Lenore inside. There's no, this is the NFL. You got to put your best talent on the field. Right now, you go back to week six. um, Isaiah Oliver is giving up 100% completion rate on balls that where the defense is targeting him. He's not showing any resistance at all. Like nine different receivers have toasted him in the last few weeks. He's not standing up in coverage. The coverage is either too soft or, you know, the tackling isn't there. Now, this last game, he made some pretty good tackles, but he's still allowing reception after reception after reception. They got to hug up on these receivers. You can have better pass rush, but if the quarterback can drop back to pass and you've got loose coverage, he any good veteran quarterback is going to pick you apart. The last couple of weeks, we've seen Joe Burrow and Kirk Cousins pick the Niners apart partly because the rush wasn't getting home, but partly because the coverage was soft. And I'm putting Womack in the lineup. I'm definitely giving Luter some run if he gets back in there. Luter played nothing but press man for South Alabama. He was a a press man corner for the Jaguars and a good one. And he looked great in the minicamp. Now, there's a little bit of mystery around Luter Jr.'s injury because he was put on the PUP list with a bone bruise in the knee Um, and that was this summer. It's now November. So what's going on there? It can't possibly be a bone bruise at this point. If he's still ailing with that injury at the, you know, they listed it as a bone bruise. So if he still has a bone bruise, I got to really wonder about what's going on there. But if you can get Womack and Luter Jr. back into the DB mix, do it. Because I think both those guys can play. I think they can both cover. I think they're NFL caliber coverage players. And that might be the reason the Niners didn't bite the bullet and and 
you know, make a trade for a corner because they got two guys in house that they like that have talent. Lean on those guys. They're good young players. I'd play Jair Brown a little bit at safety for for either Hafanga or Gibson. Jair Brown can play a little bit of the deep middle. And of course, that's that's Gibson, but he also can hit at the line of scrimmage, and that's that's Hafunga's spot. And I know Hafunga in a lot of people's minds is like special. Um He's fallen off an awful lot of blocks. Niners have missed an awful lot of tackles. The Niners have missed a lot of tackles the last few weeks, and he's right there at the top of the list and guys falling off tackles. So Jair Brown will hit you. You know, he's not a grab and drag kind of guy. He's a physical striker, uh, more along the lines of a Jimmy Ward or a or Jaquaski Tart. I want to see Jair Brown on the field striking people. Um, you got to somehow find a way to get Dre Greenlaw and Fred Warner healthy. And maybe you activate Jalen Graham. Jalen Graham is fast, athletic, and can hit. He can run and he can hit, and he's instinctive. So I think I'm, I'm going to start to try to work Jalen Graham into the mix. I'm going to try to freshen up Dre Greenlaw. I'm going to try to use Jair Brown a little bit at safety and give him some run, uh, either at free or strong. I'm going to get Womack and Luter back into the DB mix, and I'm going to play some of my younger talent on the back end. There's no doubt about it. And then, of course, you've got a brand-new edge rusher in Chase Young opposite Bosa. That should dial up some heat on the quarterback. I'm going to flex out McCaffrey a little bit more and get J.P. Mason on the field. I'm going to plug Feliciano in at center. So that's what I see. Those are the moves that I would make. I don't know that any of them are going to be a – secret elixir and all of a sudden the Niners are going to take off but I think it's about playing more of your roster playing some of the younger talent on your roster um and 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 really getting some of the talented young players that you have on your team who need some field time on the field and there's some veterans as well Feliciano's a veteran get him out there on the field a little bit more uh you know but you got some real young players here who can play you know There's no question in my mind that J.P. Mason can play. There's no question in my mind that Jalen Graham can play. There's no question in my mind that Jair Brown can play. There's no question in my mind that Womack and Luter Jr. can play on the corner. Utilize these guys. These are young players. Utilize them. All right. Thanks to Pig and a Pickle for being the title sponsor of the Krug Show. And, of course, um, thanks to Mojo Fantasy. Check that link in the description. Make sure you use the promo code Krug. Get up to $100 matched on your first deposit. Everybody who does it automatically is in the running for a Bosa or a Purdy jersey. We'll award those jerseys on Thanksgiving night in our postgame show after Niners and Seahawks. And thanks to all you guys for supporting the Krug Show on YouTube. 